Hello, this is Sharon Zarago, and today we're going to talk about comparisons. <clears throat> so when you take the SAT, you have to know several things about comparisons. First of all, you'll know that some of our words that compare two or three things end in ER, and some of them end in EST, and you have to know the difference. So you'll also have to know when to use the word more and most. And it's always about comparisons. So when two or more things are compared in a sentence, you will be required to know how those things should be correctly compared. We have three degrees of comparison that we use with modifiers. And the names of those are the positive, superlative, and comparative degrees. Now, you do not have to know the names of them, except when you and I are talking about them together. But you do have to know what happens with them. The positive degree is used for words that describe only one thing, like that dog is pretty. The comparative degree is used for words that describe only two things. So if I'm saying Sally is prettier than Sarah, then you know I put that ER on pretty, pretty, prettier. And I could also say uh, use more, and I'm going to get more into that in just a little bit. And the third degree is called the superlative degree, and that's when we have three things or more that we are um, comparing. So again, positive degree is used for just one thing when you're talking about only one thing, it's just like an adjective. The comparative degree is when you're using two things, comparing two things. And the superlative degree is for comparing three things. So I can take the word big, that's just a one syllable word, and if I want to compare two things, I say this one is bigger than that one. If I'm comparing three things, I add EST and say of the three, this is the biggest. And most of our words do just add ER and EST to those. <clears throat> However, there is a difference, and it depends on how many syllables the word has. So if the word has two syllables, most of the time we add ER and EST, like pretty, prettier, and prettiest, funny, funnier, and funniest. However, if the word either sounds funny when you put an ER on it, or it feels funny when you say it, I know that that's a crazy rule, but that's the rule. If it sounds funny, or if it feels funny. So let's try careful. I want you to just try saying carefuler. Just say it right now, carefuler. You see how it feels funny to do that, carefuler? So that's why we say more careful. If you look it up in the dictionary, generally they'll tell you to use more or most. I mean, which one to use. But um, just go by that rule. If it feels funny, then add more or most. Dreadful, more dreadful, and most dreadful instead of the dreadfulest thing I ever saw. <clears throat> so uh, we just say more careful instead of making a tongue twister. I like that. Now, when you have words with three or more syllables, you have to add the word more or most. And that's for the comparative and the superlative degree. So if I have the word like beautiful, I would have to say more beautiful and most beautiful. I can't say beautifuler or beautifulest. If it was meticulous, I can't say meticulouser. That's weird. More meticulous, most meticulous. And as with so many other aspects of the English language, there are some oddities. There are some irregular comparisons that you just simply have to memorize. I suspect you already know these. Good goes good, better, best. Many is many, more, and most. Much more and most. Little you might not know. Little, less, and least. Bad is worse and worse. And ill is worse and worse. So the issue about how many things are being compared is going to be the important thing on the SAT. If the sentence is comparing two things, you have to use the comparative degree with either ER or more. And if the sentence is comparing three or more things, you will use the superlative degree with EST or most. Actually, what I want you to know is that this is just a counting game. When you see comparisons, you just say, how many are we talking about? If we're talking about two, 
you're going to e add either ER or more. And if you're talking about three, you're going to add EST or most. So here's an example. Reba is the finer or the finest artist in our class. Well, we have to be told if we're just talking about two, and since it's a class, you, your assumption is that there's more than two people in there. And so we're comparing Reba to several other people. It would be finest. Right here says who is the better or best dancer in the class, you or your sister. <coughs> so here we're clearly only talking about two people, you or your sister. We are not comparing them to all of the dancers in the class, just two people. And so we have to say better. Who is the better dancer, you or your sister? Now, where I live, we get a lot of who's the best dancer, you or your sister. It's like people think that if you're comparing something, you always use best. And you have to watch for that on the test. They're trying to trick you when they do this. If you're talking about only two people, you use that comparative degree, which is ER or more. So there's a whole bunch of them down here. And I want you to think about these because they're easy to miss because you hear them wrong so many times. Then we have something that we call incomplete comparisons. And um, as you can see here, sometimes we take shortcuts and leave out words that we think aren't necessary. Here's the example. Michael is stronger than anyone on the team. Well, then Michael must not be on the team. Because if he is, how could he be stronger than anyone? Because he constitutes part of that anyone. It means he'd be stronger than himself. And that's not possible. There are some ways to fix this. We can use the word else in there. Michael is stronger than anyone else on the team. And then we know that Michael is part of that anyone. And yet when we say anyone else, we're excluding Michael. All right, here's another example. Mary is prettier than anyone in the room. Well, clearly, Mary must not be in the room because she can't be prettier than herself. You understand that. If you have trouble with it, keep going over it until you get it because it's a tricky little thing. So here we could say, Mary is prettier than anyone else. Or I could say, Mary is prettier than any other girl in the room. So there are two ways to fix this. You will, um, the way that this test is going to be is that you're going to find underlined words and you will have to choose from some suggested ways to fix it. You're not going to have to come up with it out of your head, but just know that when you see a comparison like this, you have to add anyone else or any other girl. And so you can see here, Roberta can sing better than any other girl in her choir. And here, James can hit a ball farther than anyone else on the field. So you'll have an opportunity to do these. Uh, it's a pretty short lesson, so I'm just going to keep on going. But if you want to pause and do these right now, you certainly can. And the last thing is illogical comparisons. Now, this is one that they test most often on. <clears throat> My voice is going. Um, Jan's time for the race is as fast as Martin. Well, here, just look. This sentence is saying the time is as fast as Martin. Now, this is absurd. You cannot compare time to a human being. Now, we can fix that several different ways, but again, you're just going to have to find that it is an error, and they'll probably give you a way to fix it. <clears throat> we can say Jan's time for the race is as fast as Martin's time, and then we're comparing time to time, and that's what we want. Or we could say Jan's time for the race is as fast as that of Martin. This is your key word right here, that. Now we're comparing time to that, and this pronoun stands for time. Or I could say, Jan's time for the race is as fast as Martin's. The apostrophe S means Martin's time. And then the last way to fix it would be Jan's time for the race is as fast as the time of Martin, just reiterating that word.
but just be sure you look for this because they use this so, so much. Comparing one thing to something else that is totally illogical. All right, then we've got some practice things here. And um, you've already probably printed out your material, so you'll be able to do this in a minute. And then we go more practice. Lots and lots of practice so that you'll be sure that you understand all of this. And then we have our test-taking practice, which you are very familiar with now. And then we'll have our passage-based testing, which you also are familiar with by now. And then you'll have your answers. And as I um, tell you all the time, when you finish with this exercise and you're checking it, please be sure to make a note of anything that gave you a lot of trouble anything that you didn't really understand so that when we meet on our webinars you can ask me about it and we can talk at length about it. We'll just talk until you understand it because it definitely is one of the big things on the test. Okay, so um, study this a little bit. Go back in your notes, look at it over again, get all your exercises done and then I will be back with you probably in a day or two.